the final step in the accounting cycle is to close the temporary or nominal accounts so that we are prepared to start for the next period, in this case, for the month of August. I've hidden some lines where the financial statements are so that we can just focus on what we need to wrap up this exercise. So what you see at the top here is the adjusted trial balance. We can see all of the balances in those accounts. I already talked about the chart of accounts and accounts being listed in a specific order, assets, liabilities, and equity accounts. So if we were to draw an imaginary line right here under retained earnings, everything after that are temporary accounts. The accounts above that line are referred to as permanent accounts. So the permanent accounts are basically balance sheet accounts. They carry their balance forward from the end of one period to the beginning of the next period. The temporary or nominal accounts get closed. They get zeroed out at the end of the period and we start fresh in those accounts for the next period. So what we need to do is first close the income statement accounts. The way we close an account is by doing the opposite of whatever's in there. So for example, starting with our revenues account, fees earned has a credit balance. We're going to need to debit that account to clear the balance. So 44,350 was in there on the credit side. If we debit 44,350, that will bring that down to a zero balance. And we're going to do the same thing with all of our expense accounts, salary expense, rent expense, supplies expense, depreciation expense, insurance expense, and miscellaneous expense. I should say rent expense, there we go. And we're going to bring in the dollar amounts again from the from the adjusted trial balance. So if you think about what we have here, we now have the revenues and the expenses. So the difference between those would be the net income. Well, net income gets added to retained earnings. And so the final line of balancing this transaction is to move the net income, the difference, to retained earnings. So we're going to find the difference here. 33,475, that should be the amount from our income statement, and we're going to move that income into retained earnings. Now, the other change we see, if, we, if you look back at your statement of stockholders' equity, the other change that we see to retained earnings is paying dividends, and dividends is the other temporary account that needs to be closed. So dividends, like an expense, reduces retained earnings. It's not actually an expense because expenses, by definition, help us make money, help us generate revenues. Paying dividends to our stockholders is outside of that question. So dividends does have a normal debit balance. It has 12500 in there, so we'll need to credit 12500 to close that. And we close it to retained earnings. So retained earnings is reduced. As I said in a previous video, dividends represent earnings of the company that are not retained. They're distributed to the stockholders. So there are our closing entries. I'll just show you one example of then posting these. We're just going to do the first line. Fees earned, debit of $44.50. So we go up to the fees earned account in the general ledger and there it is. Oh, and I hadn't posted my adjusting entry. So if we had put in the adjusting entry from page three, let me just pull that in here. The adjusting entry to fees earned. There it is, 2750. Because we never actually posted those. Of course, we would have done that if this was a real company and not just an example. And I must have typed that wrong. 
where is it? Fees earn twenty seven fifty. Twenty seven fifty. And then we were putting in the closing entry, and the closing entry was a debit of forty four three fifty. And because it had a 44350 credit balance, when we then debit 44350, we can see that that account now has a zero balance. It has been closed. And we posted it to account 41. So we come back down to our closing entries here and we put in the posting reference. It went to account 41. If you were to try that with the remaining expenses, you would see that all of those would also be zeroed out by these closing entries. The last step then is to create the post-closing trial balance. You'll notice the post-closing trial balance is the shortest trial balance we will ever see. It includes only the permanent or balance sheet accounts, the real accounts that carry their balance forward. And other than retained earnings, each one of these balances is going to be the same as it was on the adjusted trial balance. So I'm just going to type these in quickly so we can see. And these are again coming over from the adjusted trial balance. The only thing that is different is the retained earnings and the retained earnings which started with a zero balance, we have now put in 33,475 from the net income, but then we took out 12,500 for the dividends that were paid. And our final step, and we will finally be done with this problem, is to make sure that our debits and credits are still in balance for the system as a whole. If we've done our job, they will be. And I think I missed a cell there because of that pop-up. Let's see here. Let's try that again. There we are. And so the debits and credits in total are equal. Our system is happy. We have closed all of our temporary accounts. We are done with the month of July, and we are now ready to start fresh for August. One last comment. This adjusting period and closing period does not happen actually during the month of July, although we might start some of the adjustments in July. Typically, a company is looking at a, a day or a couple days for the adjusting period and then closing their books within the first few days of the new month. We're just dating everything in July, as you can see here. So although we dated this transaction July 31st, it would not actually have been entered in our books on July 31st. It takes a couple days for everything to be finished up and then we prepare our financial statements.